Okay, we are live. Hey everyone, welcome back to another virtual shadowing session. Today we have Dr. Asla and she, I've been, I've been in contact with her. She's really, really, really sweet. Um, and I'm super excited for this session because she's from Canada. She practices there and she'll be giving us some insight on how their uh, dental application works. So whenever you're ready, we can begin. Hi, thank you, Mahira, for the introduction. Hi guys, um, Asma or Dr. Rashid, whatever you guys want to call me. Um, and I have to say, I am really super excited to talk to you guys today. I know most of you are students and I just love to talk to students and, um, you know, help them with their passion, especially when it has something to do with dentistry, which is what I'm um, specialized in, right? So um, I'm going to actually share my screen right away. So you guys can see the presentation because I'll be using that. I, I don't. I actually prepared a lot to say, but um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try to go through it quickly so we can find some time for questions. So, well, thank you again, uh, First Dental Shadowing. Um, I'm going to share with you what I'm going to be discussing today. So a little bit of an introduction of myself. Uh, I'll talk to you about my education um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about my life outside of dentistry. I think it's going to be important for you to know what you can do outside of dentistry once you become a dentist. Um, I'm going to talk to you about why dentistry, why I decided to become a dentist, and I'm going to help you, I'll give you some tips to kind of know your why, because I think this is a very, very important thing you have to know. Um, I'm going to share with you my practice, how I practice dentistry, what do I do and what I like, and I'm going to cover some specialties of dentistry some of you may or may not know, so we'll talk about those, and I'm going to give you some tips on what help you you find your specialty or if you decide to be a general dentist what are the pros and cons of this um, then we're gonna cover what 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 happens after dental school when you graduate from dental school um, I'm gonna cover a little bit about um, if you were trained outside of Canada or the States what you can do to get the license in Canada or in the States I'm gonna cover mostly about Canada because that relates directly to my experience um, but uh, so there are some things that are a little bit states in Canada, and, I, and I'll point these out. I'm going to talk to you about real life because, you know, when I started dental school, honestly, no one talked to me about real life and what to expect after. So I'll talk to you a little bit about this. I hope you'll find it helpful. Um, I don't want to just encourage you guys. I actually want to let you know what you will see and experience especially the challenges so you can work around them and not be dis discour disencouraged actually when you graduate um i'm gonna cover a small part about continuing education and how to stay up to date with your knowledge and i'm gonna talk to you about my favorite part which is giving back uh so giving back to community and how to apply dentistry to that so um if at any part you guys have any questions, you, you may want to type them in, in the chat. I know Mahira and the team are amazing in following up, so we can answer those uh, at the end. So again, this is me, Asma Rashid, graduated with a DDS degree uh, in 2010. Um, I uh, practice currently in Canada, in Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. And uh, I actually, it's funny because I started at this practice literally like officially tomorrow, but I, I actually been there twice now. So, but I've been practicing in Canada since 2015, but this is my current practice address. Um, my education, I graduated um, from back home, which is Syria, um, University of Science and Technology. Um, that was back in, 2015, in 2010. Um, I'm actually from Canada. I actually decided to go back to Syria to study dentistry um, for a lot of reasons. I'm, I'm going to actually cover some of them during the presentation. Uh, when I came back to Canada, I did the equivalency process and I was able to start practicing in 2015. Um, the reason I decided to, to 
get into dental school is like, you know, when, when you're in high school, you try to decide what are the things that I like. For me, it was very obvious from the beginning. I loved science. I loved biology. I was so amazed by the human body. My sister is a pharmacist. And I remember when she was in her farm, like in her school, I would take her books and I would study her books, science book and so on. So I know I want to do something with science. Uh, and to me, the thing that made more sense was medicine or dental school. So I did apply for both. Uh, I, I got accepted in both. Actually, I did choose dentistry because to me, it kind of combined the medicine life, the art. Uh, I just liked how uh, diverse it was. Um, so um, started to practice, uh, sorry, so when I started dental school, I mean, um, back home in Syria, it is actually five years. So um, when I started, I did not have any scholarship, but through the school, I was able to get a scholarship, partial scholarship, and I graduated with honor. I was top of my class. And uh, yeah, so that was my journey in dental school. It sounds brief, but it's not. Outside of dentistry, I really love to enjoy life. I like to enjoy um, family, friends, life, anything really challenging, travel. I am a cycling instructor, so spend classes, you guys. That's, yes, here. Very challenging, very amazing for the body and for the brain. Um, I've been practicing yoga for at least five years, and now I'm actually having my yoga teacher training. So I'll hopefully in June, I'll be a yoga instructor as well. Um, I, as I said, I love to travel. I love to spend time with family. Usually, if it wasn't for COVID, out you would see me, you know, somewhere traveling because I have the weekend off. So usually I would just go somewhere, but now we're in lockdown here in Ottawa. So basically you can't leave home. So I wanted to talk to you about why, like your why, when you want to, you know, when you want to start a career, when you want to start anything in life, you have to know what you know, what's the force behind this? What's your why? Because it's going to become challenging at some point. You're going to find that you're stressed, you're disappointed. And when you get to that point, you need to come back to your why. To me, my why, um, the reason I wanted to be a dentist is like beyond my love to science and all of that is because I love to help others. And I know, you know, people say that, but I really, really enjoy helping others. And I enjoy, you know, the, the fact that I can touch people's life in a way that, you know, they make them healthier, they make them, it makes them happier and so on. Um, but I'm not going to lie, at the same time, I love to enjoy my own life. So I like to have that balance. And it took me so long to actually admit that, you know, I want to help others. But at the same time, I want to enjoy my life. I, and, you know, I don't want to spend all my life in, you know, working and studying and so on. Um, so it took me so long to, to be able to admit it and say it out loud. But now I say it and I know that... For me to be able to help others, I will have to take care of myself first. So dentistry is the perfect fit. You can have a very good lifestyle, choose your hours, um, and at the same time, work hard when you're actually at the office. So I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that it is manageable and you can find that balance somehow. Um, so I would recommend that, you know, before you get into dental school, like you can, you can still find your why after dental school, but I would say the best time is now you have to sit down, you have to think, you have to dig deep to know exactly what is the reason, uh, why would dentistry, why do you think dentistry will fit into your life and will fit your personality? Um, so that once you find it. Just remember, write it down and remember, you have to come back to it every now and then, especially during dental school. It can be challenging sometimes. So yeah, so to me, dentistry actually makes me feel full and it makes me feel so fulfilled. Um, I do practice yoga and meditation and I usually say a lot of times when I'm in my dental op doing root canal procedure, for example, I literally feel as if I'm practicing yoga, as if I'm meditating. It is that calming to me. It is that uh, fulfilling. And that's, 
that helps me actually deliver very good results for my patients and may help my patients relax as well. So whatever you feel, you can transfer to your patients. Definitely, they will feel that. My practice, I am not a specialist. I am a general dentist, which is amazing because that gives me a chance to kind of do pretty much of everything. So I do fillings, which is restor restorative, we call it. Uh, I do uh, endo, which is root canal. I replace teeth. I do lots and lots of surgeries, remove teeth, place teeth in, implants and so on. So general, being a general dentist can give you that option. A lot of people say, you know, when you're a general dentist, you're limited, you can't do certain procedures and so on. I think it's the opposite. I think when you are a general dentist, it actually gives you a variety of things that you are able to try and you're able to practice. Um, also gives you more exposure to people uh, to, that you can help and serve um, your knowledge. Like you, you're not going to be fixated on one aspect of dentistry. Um, you can kind of learn about more than one aspect because a lot of these will actually, uh, like when we, when we talk about comprehensive dental or dental care for our patients, we will have to look into these different aspects of dentistry. So to me, general dentist, being a general dentist was like, I was able to do all of the, to do this. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't like to kind of spread myself th too thin. So I chose what I like to practice and, um, those procedures usually are mostly surgeries. Um, I like uh, wisdom teeth removal, implants, gum surgeries, and so on. Uh, for procedures that I don't like, I usually refer out or I would, you know, just tell the patient that they can be seeing someone else for the treatment. Um, now, I am not sure if you guys are familiar with dental specialties, but I thought I would just list them here. So if I refer to them, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, so general dentist, I think I described that. Endodontist is uh, the specialist who does root canal treatments. So treat the nerve in the tooth. Uh, periodontist is the specialist of the gum and bone health. Prosthodontist is um, the specialist who replace teeth. So when you're missing a tooth, you, I know now we hear a lot about implants and so on. So that's proso. Um, it's, it also involves veneers uh, and crowns and so on. Orthodontist, I think a lot of people are familiar with this. This is the braces specialist. Pedodontist is usually the kids specialist. And then we have, of course, we have a lot of other specialties. One of them is pathology, which is very important in dentistry. Now, say you became a dentist and you want to choose your specialty, how, what, like, what can help you choosing your specialty? It's not easy. Uh, in my opinion, it starts at dental school. Uh, dental school is a great opportunity. I think you should take your time to explore, to try different things, different procedure. I know a lot of times at dental school, we would feel rushed or, you know, we just have to finish certain projects and so on, but try to take your time to find more about yourself, find what you enjoy doing, what make, you know, what treatments appeal to you, what you're good at, because sometimes, you know, you really, really like certain procedure, but you're not so good at it. Um, you try it, great, perfect. You, you know, you may get better. You may get better at it, but sometimes you have a nat you would have a natural talent to a certain procedure. So try to find out. You know, play around a little bit and find out what works for you. Uh, another way to decide what specialty you want to be or to take is to try to shadow different dentists. So um, in my experience, when I was at third year, um, as I said, so back home, dental school is five years. So third year was actually one of the hardest years, uh, but I would still shadow a dentist. I used to finish school, go to a dental office, stay late, and then go home, study, wake up the next morning, go back to school and so on. I did that for a year and I can't say how, like, I can't even start to say how much I benefited out of that year. I got so much out of that year. How, like I got exposed to different procedures, how to deal with patients, with staff, even the name of the instrument, of instruments, right? Materials we use for different procedures. I got all of this by shadowing. I think 
more than from dental books, because at dental books is a little bit sometimes hard to imagine, but when you actually see the procedure, the sequence, and the steps of the procedure, it, it kind of makes sense to you. So try to find a dentist that you can shadow. I think that's the best thing to do. If you can't, especially with the COVID thing now going on, I think it's it became so it became so easy for us now to do virtual shadowing, right? Um, you can connect with the dentist through um, like we're doing right now through Zoom or a lot of students I know they follow me personally on Instagram and I I post a lot about my daily life, a lot about procedures um, through uh, on my Instagram feed. So. And I get a lot of questions. Students will send me questions and uh, sometimes they will send questions about stuff I post. Sometimes they will send questions about things that they, they, you know, um, they're facing like some decisions and so on. So I try to help with that. Um, so that's really like shadowing a dentist, even though it's, you know, not actually as, as good as being in person, but it, it definitely helped. Now, after dental school, um, you can find a way to continue to explore. You know, you don't necessarily have to jump right into a dental office and start to practice um, as a dentist. If you think that you still need a little bit more time or more training, I find that finding a residency is something that can really benefit you. Um, you can try to find a residency. I, I, I would say if you decided to do that, the residency, I would say, try to do a little bit of research and find a residency that works for you. So if you're someone who likes to do implants, try to find a residency that focuses on implants. If you want to get more into, to know more about braces and so on, an orthodontist, so to try to find something that, you know, focus more on that kind of um, practice, um, that will be the best thing to do. Another way is, to just practice. Like if you can't get into any residencies, you can just start practicing. And that's actually what I did. I just start practicing and, uh, you know, give yourself some time, be forgiving, be very selective. At the beginning, you will have to say no to certain procedures. So you really shouldn't feel the pressure to accept every procedure. Know your limits and know when to refer out, you know? If you have someone else, another dentist at the office who works with you, and most likely you will, when you first graduate, you will have someone else working with you. Um, I find it very, very relieving to know that they're there for you. Whenever you need to refer a case, you can refer a case. Whenever you need to consult with them about a case, you can do the same thing. So be open, be honest with yourself, and know your limits. Don't be disencouraged. I'm not saying, you know, just refer everything out, but maybe slowly start to explore around. So, so that's pretty much how you, how you can find or how you can choose your specialty. These are some of the tips you can, you can find, you know, more, um, of course, your own way if you want. Uh, but I think these are the ones that are most important. Um, another way to know what you might like or not like is to know yourself. So if you're someone who really don't like blood on, or who would faint if you see blood, like don't get into surgery or period perio because this is all about blood, right? If you like art, if you like aesthetics, I would say, yes, get to something where you get to do more smile makeovers and stuff like that. If you like kids, you can, you know, you can become a pedodontist and deal with kids on a daily basis. I can't do that, but, you know, some people can. I, I really admire them, but, you know. Um, so now, when you're in dental school, you'll find out that you do have some aspects of dentistry that you don't enjoy you don't like or maybe you're not so good at and that's okay don't be discouraged i mean dental dentistry has a lot of practices we don't have to master everyone that was a thought right in dental school they make you feel no you have to ace everything you have to be good at everything which is good because it will give you time to explore and to you know to improve your skills but you don't have to fixate on that idea you can really try to to find what procedures you don't like 
And as I said, refer them out, uh, send them to a colleague or to a specialist. Um, I think that will, that will deliver just better results to the patient and that will make you more happy because at the end of the day, if you don't do a very good job and you'll see it tomorrow, like sometimes you really, like, you know, that idea of, oh my God, I, I don't think this denture is the best denture I've delivered. You know, what am I going to do? The patient's going to come next month. So you lose sleep, right? So just send out, know what you don't like and send out and know what you like. Like when you know what you don't like, that will give you more time to know what you like. And in that case, you get to focus more on what you like and invest more time, more money um, into focusing on that certain skill that you like. And this way you kind of make a name for yourself. You know, you improve your skill and you you become distinguished in that field in particular. To me, um, I don't I don't really do dentures, which is what you see here in the photo. And I don't know if you guys can see my cursor here, but uh, I, I remember when I was at dental school when I delivered my last denture and and to the record I was very good at dentures like you know I would get really good marks and good grades but it just didn't make sense to me because I know I could do a better job by delivering fixed uh, teeth to my patients I to me personally I believe that my patients will be happier and better off with fixed teeth than with dentures um, so I remember when I delivered my last denture at dental school I was like that's it I am not doing this in my in my practice at all. Um, and I did break that, actually. I did have to deliver a few dentures in my practice. Um, I see kids, but I also don't don't try to, you know, to advertise for that so much. Uh, my practice is mostly surgery and uh, gum, gum uh, surgeries as well. All right, so after dental school, so here I'm going to talk to you about my experience. As I said, I was trained in Syria and when I moved back to Canada, I like I needed to get my license. And I find that a lot of times when we when we study outside of Canada or the States, we don't know, you know, what's the difference, like, you know, what dental, why dental school is different than the other. So in Canada, for example, we do have some dental schools or some countries that Canada accredit, so they would accept your degree and you don't have to go through the equivalency process, basically, um, whereas other countries, they don't accept them, right? And I know we're mostly in Canada, like I know that most of the students here are in Canada and the States, but I still know that a lot of students who don't get accepted in the States or in Canada, they do travel somewhere else. So Dominican Republic or other countries, Australia, New Zealand to do their dental school there. So it's good to know, you know, what to expect when you come back. So when you finish your dental school outside of Canada and the States, you have to go through the equivalency process. So what that means is you will have to accredit your, your certificate, your uh, degree, so you can apply for the board exams, and then you can apply for your license to practice. Um, in Canada is a little bit different because uh, what we do is we apply to something called the NDEB. I think in the States it's called NBED makes a lot of difference, but uh, pretty much the same thing. You apply um, when you get accepted after processing the papers and so on, you will have to do an exam called uh, assessment of fundamental knowledge. So that exam kind of, it's, it's, it's really very overwhelming because you will be tested in pretty much everything you've learned in the past four or five years. So everything dental sciences, general sciences, so biology, anatomy, microbiology, uh, and then of course the dental sciences like uh, ortho, perio, pedo, um, and all of that. So it is, it needs a lot of preparation. It's not easy, but I always tell, I, I used to teach uh, students who are doing this exam and I always used to tell them it's not easy, but it's not impossible. A lot of people do it and you can do it, right? It just needs a lot of commitment, a lot of preparation um, to, to pass. And once you pass it, when you pass that exam, you will have 
one of two options you can do, and this is just here in Canada. This doesn't apply to the States. I know that. Um, so in Canada, you can continue with more exams. So you can do two more exams. Um, one of them is practical and another one is more case related exams. So, um, so if you finish or if you pass these two exams, perfect. That, that means, you know, you're now, your, your degree is now accredited or, you know, licensed, uh, not licensed, sorry, just, um, they accept your degree basically. The other way is you can apply to any of the Canadian universities. Um, they do have some programs for international dentists. Um, it's basically a two-year placement, uh, and then you graduate as a dental student from that university. I know in the States, you guys don't have the first option, so you don't have the exams option. If you graduate from outside of the States, you'll have to, to, uh, to actually go through the two years at university after of course doing the exams um i think in the states it used to be nped part one and two and now i think last year they just combined both into one exam so the process changes every now and then and i would say if you guys get to that point you have to look into what's what's the most current information for you um so yeah after finishing those exams you do apply for something called a Canadian board exam or board exam, I guess, in, in the States, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, and that usually two exams that you have to pass and then you'll be able to get your license. Now, when you finish dental school, whether you're international trained or trained in Canada or the States, um, you will find that life as a dentist is way different than you know life as a student in a dental school it is different and uh unfortunately dentistry is a very very isolated profession uh when you graduate a lot of students find that they're on their own um you know you kind of get a position and you start to practice uh you're either a, a one a solo dentist at the office like so you're you're surrounded with hygienists and assistants but no other dentist or you could find actually another like another opportunities where you might have a team with you or like or a few dentists with you but it's still an isolated profession because everybody will be busy with their own patients and so on so um so at, at this point you'll find that okay well who am I going to check my work with? Because, you know, in dental school, they teach you, you know, have to check the steps. So, you know, every step before you move to the next step, someone has to approve it. And now, like, who's going to approve my work? You know, you'll finish work sometimes and you think, okay, did I do a good job or not? You get a case sometimes and you stare at the x-rays for a really long time thinking, okay, is this going to need a root canal or not? Or you get an emergency and you'll find that, you know, you get a lot of differential diagnosis and you can't find out what, what's going on exactly. So it is, it is overwhelming because sometimes you won't have anyone to go back to. So my advice when you finish dental school, try to find yourself a mentor. Try to find yourself someone who's willing to um, to teach you and to you know to you to to listen to you when you come back with questions or cases to consult with. This is the best thing you can do. Mentorship always work, and it will always help you. It, sometimes you know sometimes it doesn't have to be about cases. Maybe you don't have a case. Maybe you're just you know don't know what to do, what job to choose, and so on. So try to find yourself a mentor. Sometimes you find those mentors through dental schools. Other times you can find them through, you know, um, dental conferences or other occasions. Uh, another thing to do is to stay connected to your to other dentists. So when you graduate as a dentist, stay connected with your friends. Uh, try to find yourself a local study club, and I think that's so helpful. Study clubs, um, you know, if you don't have to attend every meeting, at least try to attend every now and then so you keep that connection. Uh, conferences are also helpful to a certain degree, I find. Um, sometimes, and I know nowadays it's very popular, we do groups on Facebook, on WhatsApp. Uh, I myself have 
multiple groups on WhatsApp and it, like I, I do get back to them like and I do need them like a lot of times I would just share a case with my friends and I would say okay what do you guys think of this um what's your opinion and it's so convenient because it's just literally a text right or a WhatsApp message so try to find a way there are a lot of options luckily nowadays I think way more than when I first graduated back in 2010 so Try to find a way, try to find someone who's willing to help and be humble, you know, because sometimes that just can be harsh. You know, they can tell you, oh, you know, you're doing a bad job, whatever. Don't be discouraged, of course, but be willing to accept feedback. Um, so, yeah, and as I said, absolutely don't be discouraged. Um, take it easy and take it slowly, step by step. I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to achieve what you want to achieve. Like when I first graduated, I know I liked doing root canals, for example, but it was so challenging for me to do root canals on molars. And uh, I think Mahira might know if she started root canals procedures because molars have three roots and they're way back, so hard to reach and so on. So start with simple procedures, maybe single root, and then move on to more complicated procedures. Um, now, looking for a job, um, I didn't find it very difficult, to be honest, but it also depends. I, I don't want to say that this is the general thing. There are more dentists nowadays, I think, than when I first graduated. Um, there are more, you know, there is more competition for sure. So it really depends or on where you practice, what your limitations are in terms of what you practice, your time and all of that. I would say when you first graduate, you have to try to be flexible. So don't try to be so picky. Don't say, you know what? No, I, I don't like the schedule. I do the eight to four. That's it. I had to work um, nights. I had to work weekends. Um, I had to work really bad hours that I would never do again, but I had to do it, right? And I was happy doing it because I wanted the experience. And I know that once I get the experience, I'll be able to select and choose what fits me better. And that's what I do right now. So right now I don't work weekends. I don't work evenings. I work four days a week because I can say no. But when I first graduated, I at some point I did work seven days a week. So, you know, be more flexible, be more acceptance. Um, also, when it comes to procedures, a lot of times you'll find that when you first graduate, dentists will just throw at you procedures that they really hate doing, right? So dealing with the difficult patients that goes to the new graduate, dealing with, you know, kids that goes to you, you know, just any procedures that the principal dentist or any dentist you practice with, of course, unless you practice solo, um, they, it will it will come your way somehow, right? So just take it, learn from it, and move on it will happen that sometimes you you will find procedure stressful or you won't deliver the best results you get. That's okay. You know, you're learning. And a lot of times I find that being honest with my patient is the best thing. So if I think that, you know, I'm not so happy with the results I delivered, I bring the patient back and I try to again, um, or I tell the patient um, and so on. So, you know, try to explore, but be flexible is, is really key when it comes to looking for a job. Um, now, when you also graduate dental school and you look into, into applying for a job, I would say try to, to, to get the experience and to invest in that skill. And I, I find it so helpful to focus rather than separate yourself too thin. Um, and once you do that, no matter how busy the market is, if you build a name for yourself and you're able to be, you know, known as, oh, that's the best dentist in town who does veneers, people will come to you. People will come because they heard someone told them or they saw the smile of someone or, you know, a patient shared their experience with their neighbor and uh, you know now they want to come to you so just try to be um, good maybe at one or two areas or a few areas rather than trying to become to be good at every part of dentistry um, so 
Now, when you apply for a job and uh, you get a lot of times you get lucky and you get a lot of, uh, you know, positions actually, and now you have to choose. Um, how can you choose uh, what works for you, what, what works with your lifestyle and with your skills? First thing, and the most important thing is you'll have to know your, your limits. You have to know your skills. You have to know your experience. And I, I know I keep saying that, but I'm just letting you guys know why it is so important to take notes when you're in dental school. You know, when you find that certain procedure is so frustrating when you do and you don't enjoy it, you know, maybe that's something that you have to take note of. Um, so yeah, know your limits, know your skills um and look into that dental office and find it, am i going to be able to apply my skills in this office a lot of offices for example say you like to do full veneers and aesthetic dentistry and stuff like that but a lot of offices are not based like that you know you could practice in a very small town that you see a lot of emergencies you do a lot of surgeries so really patients are not interested in you know how their their smile is they're more interested in getting them out of pain so you have these two have to match your experience and the, the client base or the community that you're serving, you know, what is it? What are their needs? Um, for me, another very, very good factor is team. Um, I try to meet my assistants when I apply for a new job. I try to go in and see, meet the assistant, meet the hygienist, the receptionist. They're going to be part of, you know, my daily life. I'm going to be with them for six days a week. Uh, sorry, six hours uh, a day, no matter what numbers of days a week, but I'm going to be with them for a long time. They're going to schedule my patients. They're going to arrange basically my life. Like I go to the office and my life is arranged. The receptionist booked my day, the, my assistant prepared everything for me. So these are the people who are going to make you comfortable. So you want to make sure that you can connect with them. So to me, the environment, the team is so important. Um, as I said, at this point, hours and location, you know, where the office is, how much I have to drive. And so at this point, it's so important to me. I practiced in a very small town for five years. I had to drive one hour each way uh, for every day, you know, for four, four times a week. So at the beginning, you'll have to say yes, and that's okay. You know, and sometimes that continue. Like I did this for five years because I found something at the office and I know I was able to give my patients something there. So I didn't want to leave, even though the drive was a struggle, especially at winter time, right? Like I live in Canada, guys, I get, we get a lot of snow. So that can be challenging, but I did it anyway. So if it works for you, perfect, great. So, but this is something that you might want to consider when you apply for a job and, and you get job offers. Now, some of the challenges that you might find, um, I kind of limit those to two areas, mentally and physically. Um, like dentistry can be very stressful. You need to have like we dentists, like, and, and you guys, I'm pretty sure you are too. If you're applying for dental school, you find that it does need a lot of commitment. It needs certain level of education, of, uh, uh, you know, um, just the way you, you kind of handle your life in general. Um, you will have to be so committed to this. And sometimes can, that can turn into, you know, being so overwhelmed or anxious and so on. So just know that this is normal. This is absolutely okay. A lot of dentists are, you know, type A, have type A personality, and that adds to the stress. We want every procedure to be perfect. We know we want everything to go smoothly, but it doesn't work that way. Actually, a lot of things don't go smoothly in dentistry. Like a lot of procedures are so complicated. Human body can be so unpredictable. When you treat a human body, it's like I start a surgery thinking it's going to take me half an hour and sometimes it drags on and it takes me two hours and I have to reschedule my patients. That's okay. You know, it did take me before half an hour to do, but you know, this patient's, their anatomy is different or I found something different. So I have to take more time. 
So it can be stressed, especially when you have the time factor, right? Um, our time matters a lot. So um, try try to kind of mentally um, find a way to, to relieve the pressure. So as I said, to me, I find that yoga, meditation, reading, and, you know, even traveling, um, can get my mind out of that. Um, a lot of times, even during my lunchtime, I go out for walks, uh, being in nature just helped me also, you know, de-stress a little bit. Um, the other part that I find so challenging, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I know people say, no, if you held a good poster, you're not going to suffer physically, but you will. I'm sorry, but, you know, dentistry does affect your physical health. Um a lot of dentists have back, shoulder, neck issues. A lot of dentists have breast issues. Um, I'm not saying that every dentist is going to end up with it, but I'm saying that you have to be very, very careful. Um, I think that you have to, to stay active. You have to, um, like when I, when I practice dentistry, I actually try to work out in a way that will strengthen my core, my back muscles, and the muscles that I use the most to sustain my position. So try to find out uh, what works for you in terms of workout, but I would highly recommend staying highly active because it does definitely, dentistry have, like takes a lot of your physical health um, and you don't want to end up being, God forbid, disabled because of your, of your career. Um, so another challenge is... Uh, have your own practice that can be challenging because when you are an associate, I don't know if you guys know the difference, but when you graduate, you can either start your own practice or open your own practice, or you can work for someone. When you work for someone, that's easy. You go to the office, your schedule is ready. Everything's pretty much ready. You do the procedures, you walk out, that's it. You forget pretty much a lot about it. Um, Financially is rewarding, but it's not as rewarding as having your own practice, of course. But having your own practice, like it does comes with certain package too. So you'll have to deal with different staff and, and their problems. And so human resources can be very, very challenging. Uh, sometimes finding staff can be challenging. Finding the best fit for your office and for your patient is not so not very easy job to do. Um, also, you will have to take a loan, probably, and uh, financing can be very challenging. That's a big factor. Um, so there is a lot of stress when it comes to running your own practice. Um, then, like dentistry in general is a very expensive profession. Like we always joke and we say, you know, if you buy anything that has the dental, you know, work to it, like it will be at least three times more expensive than if you buy, you know, from the dollar store or whatever. Uh, and it's exact same thing. But again, it is expensive. Um, but at the same time, if you want, like for me, the way I practice is I'm willing to invest if it's going to give me peace of mind, if it's going to make my patients more comfortable, and if it's going to help me deliver the best results. So I, at this point, I honestly don't even think about the, uh, the financial part uh, or the expenses of dentistry. But if you're an owner, you will have to, you're forced to, right? So that's also, that could be challenging. Now, I actually got a question about uh, what to do when I graduated dental school and I start to practice, how can I stay up to date with my knowledge? And I think this is a very good question. I think it's a very important one because dentistry and medicine in general keep changing you know, um, new things, um, like new things get discovered and we have to change our practice, new materials, new equipment, just stuff that kind of make your life easier sometimes. So when, when you become a dentist, it is so important to kind of track what's going on and keep yourself updated. For dentists in Canada and in the States, we are required to have certain amount of hours every year um, of dental education. We call it continuing education, so CE. 
and uh, we will have to submit these to the governing body. So in our in our case, it's the Royal, Royal College of Dental Surgeons. Um, so that will include dental courses you take, workshops, webinars. Now, because of COVID, a lot of things are online. That counts too. Um, reading, researching, and stuff like that. So all of this will give you the updated knowledge. Try to be selective of what you choose because this is a very, very big field. Like you'll find a lot of courses and a lot of things. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming. Again, try to know what you like. Try to know what you want to, I don't want to say specialized in, but kind of focus your practice on and try to invest that way. I think that's way more beneficial. Um, so um yeah so basically taking courses and stuff like that is the best way to go um another way is just really to to practice at different offices because that also gives you gives you different exposures like here in canada a lot of times we would um travel up north and that's completely different experience than practicing in the city. So you can do that but I, some sometimes that will count as CE as well. Um, I'm going to talk about, um, again, back to why, to my why and why I chose to become a dentist. Um, I said, I like to help others. And I find that a lot of times when we practice in the city, especially after practicing for a long time, um, you kind of like, don't apply this as much as you like to. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to travel on missionary trips and uh, that started actually as soon as I graduated back in 2015, so not graduated, sorry, finished my licensing in Canada 2015. Uh, I went to Turkey where I uh, treated in an orphanage. I was treating uh, kids who were affected by war and that was just so rewarding. Um, it was an amazing experience for me and I said, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it every year. And guess what? Five years later, I didn't do it. Not until last, actually not until February of this year. Um, I did on a missionary trip again to the Dominican Republic. And uh, this time I went with a group of dentists. Uh, we kind of share the same vision for a lot of things. We all are yogi dentists. We all do yoga and we do dentistry at the same time. So it was fun. It was uh, part of a yoga um, education retreat and also a missionary trip as well. We were able to do so many things. We were able to treat a lot of patients and help a lot. Um, so that was so rewarding. Unfortunately, because of COVID, now things are so limited. So even to be able to go on that trip, it took us a lot of preparation. We had to kind of like to like for me, especially from Canada, because of the travel restrictions, I had to kind of go in circles. And sometimes I was frustrated, but I made it and we made it and we were able to help. So things like that, find what you like. Um, to kind of keep you passionate about the profession because after practicing for some time you may kind of you could get you know so like um i want to say so overwhelmed with with just a regular dentistry day-to-day -day dentistry your bills and stuff like that so try to disconnect and try to remember again what's your why I promise you, it will make you feel so happy and so fulfilled. And it will kind of remind you of how you feel when you were first accepted in dental school and you would think, oh my God, I'm going to graduate as a dentist. I'm going to do this and that. It, it just gives you that feeling again. So try to find something that you enjoy, that you love and go back to it every now and then. I was aiming to finish 10 minutes before. Okay, well, eight minutes, not too bad. Thank you so much, guys. I wanted to leave this space for your questions. I'll try to answer uh, as much as I can. Um, so yeah, back to you, Mahira. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Asma. Um, that was an amazing presentation and I that was so insightful. So thank you so much for that. Um, so now we can transition into um, some questions. So the first question we had was about your dental school experience. So you said you went to dental school in Syria and how would you say like 
like what made you want to go there and how is it different than like in Canada or like in America like what would be like the diff like the biggest difference if there is any so when I finished high school I honestly did apply to a biology program here in Canada and I and I wanted to do the four years and then the four years of dentistry I kind of heard some stories that discouraged me about, you know, oh, you might not get accepted. In Canada, we don't have a lot of dental schools, unfortunately. We're so limited. We have so limited options. Um, so I decided to go back uh, to Syria. Um, I didn't think that dentistry would be different. And I don't think it is. If anything, I think it, it got me exposed to different schools right because in syria we practice more the european school uh the french school of dentistry uh, which is not super different honestly but again um in the kind of north america kind of we have our own school here right um luckily for me my dental school in syria was actually one that and that's affiliated with a dental school in Canada and in, in the States. So I kind of studied the same books and same, same like curriculum, I would say, as if I were to study here in Canada or the States. So when I came back, I, I honestly didn't see much of difference. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so kind of moving on to like a day in your life at your office like what would you say that would look like when you first kind of come to the office and how would your day look like like with procedures and just other people that you work with and could you describe that a little bit yeah uh i love that question <laughs> yeah so i i kind of honestly i do share a lot on my instagram about it um so so i go to the office um, first thing we, we do, first thing I do actually, when I get to the office is I look at the schedule because as I said, I don't do the booking myself, my assistants or the receptionists usually are the ones who do the booking. So I meet with my, my assistants and we go through the schedule and we plan the day, how things will be running and so on. Um, I do operate in two rooms. So basically I prepare one room for a certain procedure and I jump to the next room right away, pretty much after. So there, there isn't a lot of gaps in between my patients. Um, now, because of COVID, we kind of added some gaps, but now we're going back to normal where we kind of have go back to back patient to patient. So we kind of prepare this first thing in the morning. Um, I start my day, you know, with, um, I love to chat. I have to say that I love to talk a lot. So a lot of times when I go in for a certain procedure, uh, when I meet the patient, I love to ask them about their life and their, you know, what's new with them, what keeps them excited. And that sometimes takes time of my time. Right. But I do enjoy it. And I find that patients gets more relaxed instead of just going into the op and start the procedure right away. A lot of times these small talks takes away from the anxiety, patients anxiety. Um, so I, I always try to finish at lunchtime and give my assistant her lunchtime. Um, I am most likely successful with that. Sometimes we run through like a little bit late, uh, but uh, we will get some sort of lunch. Um, during lunch hour, I usually walk. I, I, I work in a small town um, and I used to, uh, not anymore. And it's so beautiful. It's right on the river. And I used to go for walks usually around the office at my lunch hour. Um, finish the day, pretty much the same thing. I don't do sterilization or I don't do room turnovers or seating the patients. Dentists don't do that. Uh, my assistant does all of that. Um, sometimes I help. I like to help. I like to tell her what to prepare or so on. Um, but she's, she's very good and they're trained to be very quick and so on. Um, during my day when I do dental procedures, a lot of times that the hygienist would come by and um, usually they would ask me for a specific exam or just a follow-up exam on, on the hygiene patient. So uh, I would have to step out of my op and go in and see, meet more patients, right, for, for checkups. So, so that's basically my day. Um, at the end of each appointment, 
I try to sit down for a few minutes and write down the chart, the patient's chart. Um, and this is so important. Like there is a lot of writing when it comes to medicine and dentistry. We have to write, we have to chart pretty much the procedure, what we did, the medications or the, the, the materials we used. So I try to stay on top of that because a lot of times with a busy schedule, you can forget a few things or it can just feel so overwhelming at the end of the day. Um, so I try to do that. But a lot of times I sit after, you know, when the day is done, to kind of plan my, you know, if I have certain treatment plans I have to to go through and so on, I do that. So yeah, that's briefly my day. Awesome, sounds wonderful. Uh, so uh, our next question kind of has to do with the giving back portion, which I really love that you included because I think that's super important, especially with dentistry and kind of just talking about mission trips. So like for somebody that's interested in getting involved, whether they are a dental student or being a dentist, like what are some ways to get involved to help and give back? So really there are a lot of ways and uh, there is more awareness to this nowadays luckily so you really don't have to travel i love to travel so i kind of try to combine both traveling and dentistry uh, but you don't have to um, i know here in ottawa we have actually one of my friends run this one day free dentistry initiative and it's amazing so they go through different dental offices participant dental offices Dentists, staff, everybody will volunteer their time, uh, their the material, everything. So we will provide free dental treatment to, to societies and uh, those can be so rewarding. Another thing I used to do when I was when, like, I, I think that was like two or three years back, um, I used to actually go uh, do mobile dentistry to older people in homes. So I would go to retirement homes or nursing homes and I would like, it's mostly to do checkups. A lot of times you really can't do a lot, but I would do checkups, teeth removal, get them out of pain. A lot of times I would do cleaning, even though we don't do cleaning in an in, in office, right? But I know there is a need for it in, in with this uh, older community. So, so I did that too. So these are two examples of things you can do here in town. Um, I know that also there are some events that, you know, the, the society might, might do that, you know, they would open free dental care for patients in certain practice and they would ask for volunteer dentists so you can participate in stuff like that. If you're looking for travel, um, there are a lot of organization that you can go through um, and you can apply for so you can, you know, serve completely different community outside of, you know, your own community or city. Uh, if you need more information, especially about my very last trip or even the previous trip, let me know. Uh, you, they can reach out to me and I can give them more details. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so our next question has to do with um, how you mentioned about the importance of having like good posture um, while like doing dental procedures. So like what are some tips on specifically that you might follow to prevent any kind of like pain or damage? That's that's a very good question. So when you um, when you start to practice, uh try to learn to practice right from the very beginning don't try to compensate don't try to kind of you know bend a little bit or stand up in a certain person like you know in a position that you're not comfortable with just so you can make your patient comfortable or you can accomplish that. no take your time sit down um so important to use your core kind of engage your core lower your shoulder and i think one of the best thing you can invest in is find some good loops. So using loops can really help uh, with your neck and your head position. Um, and there are so many loops nowadays. Um, so finding the right loops, finding the right chair, even sometimes I do use saddle chair. So I don't sit on a regular dental chair. Um, it's just something that's um, that kind of support my posture better. Um, so finding the right chair, right? loops um and don't be afraid to lower the chair i know a lot of patients don't like it but i kind of explained to them that i have to lower you to this degree because i need to see better 
Um, and, and patients understand they're only there for for a short period of time. They're only on your chair for maximum like what 50 minutes. Uh, but you're doing this every day for six hours. So you don't compensate. You ask your patient, you explain to them and you ask them that, you know, I know it's not very comfortable to you. We can give you breaks, but I need to work in this position. Um, so yeah, so try to do it right from the very beginning. If you're trained to compensate, I find it so hard to go back to practice in the right posture. Awesome. Thank you for the uh, advice there. Um, so our next question is just kind of what's your favorite procedure to do? Like which procedures do you kind of never get tired of doing? And you're always like excited uh, when you have that as in a patient. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. I love surgery. I love to do surgeries. I, I don't get tired of that. It gives me a lot of uh, excitement. Um, it's so challenging. It's not easy. So I'm not saying it's an easy procedure to do, but uh, I find that uh, always um, kind of keep me, you know, on my edge. So I love surgeries. I love wisdom teeth extractions, uh, implants, uh, procedures as well. Um, yeah. I also really enjoy root canals when I'm so tired. If I get root canals, that's really helpful, like to calm me down. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of like these two, basically, surgeries and root canals, probably. Awesome. Thank you. So we have time for like one more question. So this will be the last one. Um, but this is just kind of um, what was like the biggest like reality shock when coming out of dental school and actually practicing that something you just did not expect that would happen in the real world and something that you expected and did happen. That makes sense. Hmm. I have to think of that one. Uh, something I didn't expect. Well, I found that a lot of like a lot of my experience in dentistry, uh, I, I didn't mention this, but I did work as a dental assistant for two years um, during right the equivalency and all that. So that gave me a lot of exposure to dental to dentistry in general. So um, I can't say that I was shocked when I was like when I needed to practice as a dentist, actually, I was very confident. I went to the dental office first day and I wanted to do procedures and root canals. And I remember at the time the dentist was like, okay, well, why don't you just, you know, do it slowly? I'm like, why? I'm trained to do it. I trained to do it in dental school. I can do it in life, right? Um, I think uh, something that I was shocked with is a lot of times you don't get to select the procedures. Um, so that's something that you did in dental school, right? You know exactly where you're going to do and how things are going to go. Everything is kind of planned because the case, before you start a case, you study it very good. And it's the same in dental, like when you practice on your own, but, uh, when you practice in a private office, a lot of things can be unpredictable. So if you start a procedure and it turns into root canal, you'll have to finish it. You can't just send it to the endo people, right? Um, so yeah, stuff like that. Um, so that was something, I wouldn't say I was so shocked, but yes, maybe it was different. Um, something I knew, hmm. I don't know, I think I'll have to think about this one. Yeah. I, I don't think I have an answer up on my, my head right now. No worries. Thank you. But um, that was a wonderful response to the first part. But thank you so much. Um, so this is the end of our virtual session for today. I want to say thank you so much, Dr. Osno, one more time for the amazing presentation and question answer um, session. I know all our viewers enjoyed that. And we really, truly appreciate the time that you took out. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. Thank you, Neverine. Thank you.